Thanks for inviting me. I'm really pleased to be here today. My background is in library science. And so, as a librarian, I am a very strong advocate of freedom of information. In 2005, I was working in a library surrounded by books. Books full of information, accessible to anyone. I was in my glory until I realized that people aren't using books to find information anymore. People were using little devices with sensors and various pieces of hardware, like computers. So I got a little discouraged thinking that my technology was taking over my books that had all my information. But a couple years later, I learned how to code my first website. And when I learned that you can right-click on any page and view the source code for that web page, it blew my mind. I thought, this is freedom of information. It just happens to be a different medium instead of books. Open source hardware, or open source software, was at my fingertips. And that open source software led me to open source hardware. Open source hardware is a movement where instead of patenting your idea, you throw out all the design files into the world and let people see them with the expectation that people will remix, remanufacture, and redistribute your product. And we do this because it creates for a better innovation. It creates for an open environment to share information. And it creates a unique opportunity for companies and individuals to communicate together and learn from each other. The open source hardware movement is a growing one and a lucrative one. We have many businesses that are reporting their uh, revenues in the millions of dollars each year. And our business model is pretty simple. We make things, anything that's physical can be open source hardware, and then we sell it. It's an old business model, you may have heard of it before. So I think that open source hardware is an alternative to the patent system. And recently, there have been more and more lawyers and scholars who have been criticizing the patent system, especially with the recent Apple versus Samsung lawsuit you may have heard about. And I am so dedicated to this movement that I have chaired two conferences on this topic and have started the Open Source Hardware Association. Thomas Edison said, hell, there are no rules here. We're trying to accomplish something. So when we're trying to accomplish something, we just throw all the rules out the window. And generally, as a hacker, I agree with that. However, it has become commonplace in our society to put really strict rules on invasion, innovations and inventions. Patents. The patent system was formed as an incentive to inventors. An inventor would get 20 years of exclusive rights to their invention. And in return, they had to create a working prototype and disclose how they built it to the public. But those rules have changed. And in the patent system today, there are many schools of thought that the system is broken. Inventors are inventing things due to different incentives. The money to be had in the patent system is often going to lawyers rather than to the inventor. And 20 years is a long time in this fast-paced society we live in today. But I'm not here to talk to you about the rules of yesterday. I want to talk to you about the rules of the future. And to move forward, I think we need to step back and take a look at our roots and remember what we learned in kindergarten. Robert Fulgham wrote the book, All I Really Need to Know, I learned in kindergarten. And as someone who's worked with kindergarten students in a library setting for a number of years, I agree with his philosophies. And so I took those and applied them to the innovation process, both on the side of patents 
and open source hardware. And I did this from a kindergarten perspective. Rule number one, share everything. We spend the better part of a child's life teaching them that sharing is the right thing to do. And in open source hardware, we share everything so that somebody else can replicate your product. Now, if we try to place this model into the patent system, you get a little bit of a different scenario. And thank God five-year-olds don't think to charge a licensing fee and take ownership of everything drawn every time they share a crayon. Playing fair has just as much to do with the system as it does the players in it. Patents were first initiated because inventors did not have a fair playing field. But today, patents are expensive, and the playing field often involves large companies with huge patent portfolios and benefits those people instead. So with open source hardware, we also have to play fair. And playing fair in open source hardware means that if you decide to give your design files to the world, you don't get to tattle when somebody copies you. Put things back where you found them. When you make a product, often open source hardware design, it's called a derivative. And open source hardware is viral, meaning that anything created from that hardware must also be open source. So you need to share the source files with the world so that they may also have an opportunity to innovate based on your design. Source files are different depending on which field you come from. If you're baking, a source file is a recipe. If you're sewing, a source file is a, pat uh, a pattern design. And if you're making electronics, source files include schematics, code, and Gerber files, to name a few. So you have to put these source files back into the public so that everyone can use them. Unlike patents, which give exclusive rights for an unreasonable amount of time. And we've seen where exclusive rights can become problematic, both in the music industry and in copyright. A few years back, Creative Commons was developed as an alternative to the copyright system. And I think it's about time that we have an alternative in the hardware system, a system that lets you pick and choose exactly what kind of license you want on it. Luckily, this rule has literally been enforced as we grow up into adulthood. But if we take more of a theoretical approach to our kindergarten analogy, we teach kindergartners that sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And when you lose, it is not OK to throw a fit, hire a team of highly paid lawyers, and convince a court that rounded corners were your invention. This is a patent from the Apple versus Samsung case. And it's left us questioning, what is a quality innovation in the eyes of a patent office? I mean, really? A rectangle with rounded corners? A kindergartner could have come up with that. We're taught in kindergarten not to take things that aren't ours. This includes erasing the name of someone else's paper and writing yours instead. Open source hardware is a pool of shared ideas. And so it's very important to us that we give attribution to the original creator. We don't put a company's name on a product if we are not that company, but we do give them credit where credit is due. 
And we've seen that this is very important because in the Creative Commons system that I mentioned before, attribution was such a popular option that it ended up getting rolled into the blanket Creative Commons license because everyone wanted attribution. So I think this shows us that if we're willing to give credit where credit is due, more people are willing to share their designs. Unfortunately, in the patent world, there's not really a history of giving attribution once you copy the invention. So there's no provenance to patents like there is in open source hardware. In kindergarten, we learn that to make things right, you need to apologize. Patent holders learn that to make things right, you need a lawsuit, a court case, or a settlement. And really, if you're hitting somebody with a bunch of patents, your apology might more appropriately look like this. We know that sharing cookies can be the hardest thing to do. In kindergarten, cookies are currency. And since we're on the topic of currency, open source hardware is capitalism with a capital C. In this marketplace, the best open hardware design wins rather than the first person to file the patent. If you ha can build somebody else's innovation better than they can, society as a whole benefits. But if you stop that innovation with a patent, you kill that innovation, and nobody gets to learn from it. So with open source hardware, while we're sharing all of these designs, companies are being developed on the shoulders of each other, and communities are being developed at the same time by working together. And yet, somehow these companies aren't going away. In fact, there's becoming more and more open source companies every day. I think part of this is that those companies, rather than relying on patents, rather than relying on a government intervention, are relying on the fact that ideas are shareable. So if I have an idea, it's not really property. I can share it with you, and we still both know the idea. It is not something like a cup, where if I give it to you, I no longer have it, right? So they say that ideas are a dime a dozen. So why are we spending so much money for ownership of an idea? Wouldn't we rather spend that money for development of something awesome? They say that two heads are better than one, and this is often the case in open source hardware. We have an inviting community, and in that community, we encourage people to work together. So rather than secretly hoarding your discovery, we share it with the world. We hold the expectation that a five-year-old should follow these rules. So why don't we hold that same expectation to a 25-year-old CEO? And what I want to leave you with today is for your next invention, consider the things that you learned in kindergarten. Play fair, eat cookies, and share everything. Open source hardware is the way of the future. Let's out-innovate the patent system with what we learned in kindergarten. Thank you. <laughs>